Well, hello there, people. It is me, Captain Steve. And today, chums, it's not a gaming video. No, it's not. Today, I'm going to be talking about when I went to get my COVID vaccine. So I'm definitely not in the anti-vax camp. In fact, I believe that stem cell research and the mRNA technology and even nanotechnology is the way that we're going to be able to cure cancer one day, Alzheimer's and all that sort of stuff. So I'm a big advocate for it. And I was first in line to go and get my jab um, as soon as I could when it reached my age range. Also, at the time when it came round to go in for my COVID vaccine, there was a whole breakout in India of Delta. And there was um, images on the news of people being burned in the street because the crematoriums were full. It was freaking horrendous. So yeah, I thought, right, well, I'm definitely going to have to get this vaccine. And I went along and I had mine done. So let me just cover my name there. So there we go. There's my um, card there. You can see my my batch number and that I had P Pfizer and that was back in May, May of 2021. Yep, so I had my first jab. Now, when I actually had my jab, I noticed something very odd when I got injected. So when I got injected, I had this feeling like someone had just tipped some cold water down my back. It was like a cold sensation went all the way down my body, went right across my shoulder. So I had it in this arm, at the top of this arm. And it, yeah, that's my left arm, just in case this camera's reversed or whatever. And uh, yeah, it just felt like cold sensation right down my back. It went right down to the knee of my back. I was like, oh, that, that felt a bit strange. And then not so long after that, I had this sort of downward pressure on my throat here. And every time I swallowed, I was getting this really bitter, salty taste in my mouth. It just didn't, just didn't bode right. It was not a very nice taste. And I didn't feel too right. I felt a little bit giddy, but not overly. So yeah, I went back and I sat in my car for a good 15 minutes. They gave me a pamphlet to read. So I read that. And I noticed that when I looked up from it, I had to blink a couple of times to get my focus back. And I thought, you know what? I, I don't think I'm okay to drive. So I, I, I got out the car and I went for a little walk. And um I, I could feel my heart was actually beating faster. I was like, okay, so going for a walk isn't helping either. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I went up to the local um, centre and I thought, well, you know, it's early in the day. So I, I had myself a, a, a quick cup of tea up there and sat down for a bit and, and just took a bit of a breather there. And then I thought, you know, I'm feeling a bit better now. So I got in my car, drove home. It's not too far anyway. It's like a 10 minute drive, not even that. So I got back to my house, got back into my house. And yeah, my arm wasn't aching or anything. I know that's one of the symptoms, but it was this downward pressure on my neck that was very odd. And the taste, the taste in my mouth, again, was very odd. The next day I woke up and, yes, I had the sore arm. You know, you couldn't lift it all that high and things. And I was like, oh, yeah. There's a, but it, it, the taste had gone. The taste had gone in my mouth at this stage. But what had occurred, though, is I had this really weird neck ache. It was just an ache, just a throb that was always there. It went up through the back of my right-hand side of my neck, the opposite side to where I got injected. And it would go up across my ear and then to my eye socket. And it's a weird sort of headache. It started as a neck ache. If I wake up in the mornings with a neck ache, guarantee you within an hour or two, I've got this really weird headache that goes, across. it's like an arcing headache that goes across my head. Anyhow, I've got a lot of um, communications that I've been having with my doctors to and fro. I'll put those up on the screen for a sec while I'm talking. Here you go. So I went for a D-dimmer test. That was the test results from the D-dimmer because I heard that D-dimmer could have something to do with it. It's something to do with um, local clotting or something inside of your blood on a microscopic scale but it could be something to do with maybe um, circula circulation so I got tested for that but that came back as normal um, my doctor actually sent me for an MRI scan so I went for an MRI scan and it came back that I did have something wrong with the back of my neck some sort of yeah so he referred me to a physiotherapist <laughs> So I went to a physiotherapist. Well, it was through a Zoom call, to be honest. And the physiotherapist, funny enough, said, you know what, there's a lot of people with the same symptoms as you, this neck ache and the funny headaches happening after having the vaccine. He goes, I don't think there's anything I can do with you. I don't think it's skeletal or whatsoever. Go back to your actual GP. So, you know, I did. I went back to my GP and uh, I didn't have much luck in um, booking a blood test because they'd run out of the little vials. You know, the actual vials for blood tests. They'd run out in the whole of the UK. So that didn't work too well. So I decided, right, I'm going to report something through the yellow card reporting system at this stage. So I submitted a yellow card reporting thing and it had a box there. It said, do you want to let your doctor know of all these symptoms? I was like, 
fantastic yes tick that box tick that box and so hopefully it all went to my doctor but then i kept getting all these sms messages from the actual doctor's surgery saying do you want to come in for your second vaccine you're eligible for your second vaccine so this is this is probably about six to eight weeks later or whatever the actual gap is between your first and second vaccine and i just ignored them and in the end I mean, I was trying to get booked back in for a blood test, but the amount of messages I got was freaking ridiculous. Let me see if I can bring up just how many messages I was getting from the NHS. Uh, OK, is it that one? No, I don't know. It, it, oh, man. Yeah, it's, diff it's difficult to find them now. But yeah, I was getting shed loads of them. In fact, I'll, I'll have a look, see if I can find them. Messages. OK, right, I was in the wrong place and nhs where are you nhs services nhs vaccine so here we go and it, it's just reams of this stuff let me just turn that lamp off and hopefully you can see my phone screen um maybe you can't great all right well just trust me there's freaking pages and pages of messages coming through saying you haven't had your vaccine you haven't had your vaccine and it <sighs> that's all i could see and i missed a blood test because of the amount of freaking spam emails that I was getting about the vaccine I missed when I could have gone for my blood test the first time so I had to rebook it then I went back for the blood test and that came back as completely clear so I still don't know why I'm getting the symptoms I'm getting so let me just outline some of the symptoms I'm getting so when I wake up in the mornings I wake up with a very strange cough and it's there until about maybe for, for about two hours and it's just a phlegmy sort of cough i get this weird coating in my mouth and it feels like when i wake up it feels like i'm swallowing gunge basically and bringing up guitar and yet that same cough happens if i eat anything later in the day usually if it's anything fatty like meats or anything like that yeah not so good here you go i'll turn that lamp back on there you go <laughs> a bit of color in my face yeah don't worry i'm not dying <laughs> at least i hope i'm not yeah and um yeah it, <laughs> so there's that and i just feel very fatigued if i go up and down stairs i can feel my heart beating if i do strenuous activity i built this chair the other day I had to go lay down afterwards for half an hour just to get my breath back it's really simple stuff as well and i was never like this before i used to cut my hair a little bit like wolverine i used to joke that i am like wolverine i never get ill i never get the common cold never get the flu and if even if i do get something like a stomach bug i carry on eating i'm one of those people you know i really do think i've got a top notch freaking immune system i've had kidney stones once and that wasn't very pleasant no that was very painful but um yeah this neck ache i've got it right now but it, I, I was arcing earlier and going across to my eye now normally you would say well take paracetamol the paracetamols don't touch it and it's not like a migraine either and other symptoms i've got if i do blow my nose or anything like that as soon as i've finished open my eyes it's like i see black snow everywhere and sometimes i get a really cool sort of um it's almost like I'm looking through one of those kaleidoscopes around the edges of my vision. And it can be there for a good 15 minutes. And I'm, I haven't taken anything. It's just when I blow my nose or cough or something. It's mental. Um, but that's really trippy. I kind of li kind of like that one. But <laughs> as far as side effects go, that one that one's tolerable. But it's weird. Um, what else do I get? Yeah, the fatigue is the main thing. Fatigue, the headaches, the vision stuff. Sometimes balance is a little off as well. And it's usually after I've sneezed or coughed or blew my nose or something like that. Yeah, I might sort of rock backwards a little bit on my heels and sort of feel like I'm going to fall backwards. So I just have to lean forwards for a bit. Um, the coughing and stuff after a meal, that's not good. I also get heartburn at night. I Sometimes I used to get heartburn, but not as frequently as now. It's almost every night, so I've got like um, heartburn tablets next to my bed. Also cramping the feet and cramping the hands. That happens a heck of a lot. Uh, yeah, it's just weirdness, just weirdness, general weirdness. And when I tell these symptoms to my doctor, he's like, well, a lot of these are common straight after the vaccine, but you shouldn't be having them now. I mean, I had it in May last year, and what? Well, it's February now and I'm still getting these symptoms and they still keep coming back now after I had the vaccine I had really bad heart palpitations now I only get the palpitations if I exert myself slightly and I'm, I'm talking very slight I could just go up the stairs and I'd be out of breath I'm also getting brain fog a lot of brain fog so I just wake up in the morning I, it's like my partner she'd go to work 
I'd go to make a cup of tea, and I'd put two cups down and start making two cups of tea, even though she isn't here. And I actually drove her to work. Never would I have done that prior to the vaccine. I'm very compass mentes. I've got a freaking indelic memory. And um, yeah, now I'm forgetting things and having like what I would call brain farts. Mo moments where I lose the right word or my train of thought just goes off on one. I mean, I'm doing quite well. I mean, I'm a content creator. I do this on YouTube quite a lot, and uh, it has affected me a little to the point where now a lot of my ve my uh, videos, I pre-edit them, then talk over the top of them, where before I would have done what I'm doing now and just talk straight to camera. I can still do it. I can still do it. But even on some of my live streams, if you look back at some of the recent ones, I have struggled. It's like I was talking about Star Wars, one of my most favorite freaking subjects. I could go a mastermind for Star Wars. And I forgot the name of the planet that, um, you know, they do all the cloning on. Camino. I, can, I couldn't bring it to my mind. I'm also a Greek mythology buff. And Hades. I forgot the name Hades. I could only get Hermes out. And I had Hades in my head. I could picture him in his big dark horse with six legs. Oh, no, that's Odin. But yeah, <laughs> the gatekeeper of freaking hell. I forgot his name. Hades. Yeah, freaking mentals. You know, I knew his dog, Cerebus. That could come straight off the tongue. But his name, no. It was weird. Brain fog and sort of brain farts. And at one point, just straight after, well, probably about a week after the vaccine, I was really struggling, really struggling with with um, just bringing out words and sentences and stuff, which really isn't me. So that's kind of my my sort of trial with this vaccine, if you like. Now, I, I'm wondering whenever I, when I went for the actual vaccine, I was standing outside with quite a lot of other people going in for the vaccine and they were running to time, which was nice and quick. But there was a lot of people there and they weren't really keeping the two meter distance. And uh, yeah, I tried my best, but, you know, you're going through in a queue, you know, you know how it is. I could have picked up COVID on the exact same day as I had my vaccine. And perhaps these symptoms that I'm having are actually long COVID. I have asked my doctor if I could have a blood test that shows my immune levels and whether I've got natural immunity, because part of me thinks I might have contracted COVID on the exact same day as I went for my vaccine. However, another part of me wonders when they actually gave me the jab, where instead of putting it into the actual tissue of my arm, they actually injected it into a vessel, like a blood vessel. Hence why I maybe felt all that cold chill all over my body and the weird taste in my mouth. And perhaps that's why I've had adverse effects. And perhaps why I've had such a medley of adverse effects is perhaps it's travelled my whole circulation system. Hence the heart palpitations, the brain issues, the main two organs of your body. So there is that. But I can't get anyone to listen to me. I go to my doctor, he fobs me off. Um, or it feels like I'm wasting his time. I mean... To be, to be fair, he has booked me for the MRI. He has booked me for a blood test. I can't say he's totally fobbed me off, but now when I contact my doctors, it's, it, it feels like I'm wasting their time because they've done all the tests. They've done what they need to do. They've ticked all their boxes and there's no more boxes for them to tick. So I've just got to live with the way that I am now. And my quality of life has been reduced down to how I've been feeling, whether that's whether I've contracted COVID at the same time as the vaccine or whether it's down to the vaccine. I just don't know. And because there's no real avenue for me to talk to other people about these adverse effects, I can't find out how widespread this is. I've actually contacted the National Record of Statistics to ask for stuff, or I've reached out to the Yellow Card Reporting Tool to say, well, how many people have reported the same symptoms as me? It's all well and good having these freaking apps on our phone for COVID passports and stuff, but it should be linked to the yellow card reporting system and it should be more transparent. If you're expecting us to walk around with trackers in our pockets for passports and all sorts of other shenanigans, link it to the actual adverse effects register so you can make better vaccines going forwards. It would make sense, wouldn't it? But they're not doing that. Now, why aren't they doing that? You know, it's that sort of stuff that makes me feel, well... You know, I would love for them to get a perfect vaccine and love to see this work. Because like I said at the start of this video, I'm definitely not against vaccines because I honestly feel that these sort of technologies could be the way that we beat cancer, Alzheimer's and many other diseases in the future. Stem cell research, nanotechnologies, MNRA technologies. It's the way forwards, but we need to get it right. 
And if they linked the two apps together, the adverse reporting yellow card app into the actual passport app, I think a lot more people will get on board with it because then you know you've got that safety net. If you have problems and you know it's going to go straight to your doctor and they're going to investigate it and they're going to improve it by sending that data back to the actual vaccine providers and it's a closed loop and you're being listened to, then it would work. I would, I would probably go for my second vaccine knowing that if I had more adverse effects, even though they've really crippled me to some extent, as long as I knew that it might save somebody else, the upset that I've been through, I'd probably do it at risk of my own health. I know that sounds crazy, but I honestly firmly believe in the medical care that this could provide. And if the right technology was there, it could enhance the NHS and the medical profession so much with the way that we can handle data. But if you're not linking up your apps, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Anyway, that's everything that I've got to say on the matter. I thought I would do this video mainly because a lot of people out there in my viewing audience have seen a slight change in myself at times during my live stream and seen the frustration when I can't find a word or two. And I just wanted to let people know that although that I am struggling a little, I am getting better. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm past the worst of it and I'm feeling more back to normal. So anyhow, thank you very much, everybody, for all viewing and watching and all that sort of stuff. And if you've had adverse effects and I'm not alone, please let me know in the comments. Or if you know somebody else that's had the similar sort of adverse effects, send this video over to them so they know that they're not alone. So thank you very much. Cheers for watching. Take care. Goodbye for now. Bye bye.